This little video is about the psychological model I learned at Sandler Training, one of the premier sales training organizations in the world. But it's not only for sales, but for dealing first with yourself and then with other people. In this section, we're going to deal with the PAC model developed by Dr. Eric Byrne in relation to sales, and beyond sales, more of how to deal with people. And not only that, but for why most people in this world are stuck, but don't have a clue why, and more importantly, what they can do about it. Before we do that, let's review what some of the ego states in the PAC model mean. And it's not really important that you get this 100%. Just a dab will do. The P in the PAC model, the parent ego state, are those thoughts, behaviors, and feelings adopted from modeling an authority figure, like a mom or a dad or a coach. For instance, you may be very much like your mother, father, coach, or any other person that impacted you as a youngster. That's the parent. In some sense, their values are stamped upon you to such an extent that there isn't a conscious awareness of where they leave off and you begin. The adult ego state reflects the behaviors, thoughts, and feelings which are direct responses to the here and now. It's a logical form of thinking. Unscripted. In other words, you've already developed the decision-making capabilities or critical skills to function in the real world. That's why the adult ego state is often likened to a computer. It makes decisions without emotion or parental scripting. The child ego state reflects how a person behaved, thought, and felt as a child. The time a person was still collecting enough experiences to make sense of the world. The child can either be what transactional analysis terms the free creative child or adaptive rebellious child. And adaptive and rebellious are kind of two different categories. This is largely determined by the child's interpretations about the stimuli from one's parents or authority figures, or even the world in general. The free child or creative child feels accepted by their authority figures, or at least interprets what happens as favorable. Therefore, this type of child develops an ego state which is free from conditional acceptance. And we'll go over what that means here in a minute. In TA, the creative child adopts a position that I'm okay, and we're going to be talking about all these different life positions in upcoming videos. For example, a parental figure might state, Johnny, I would love you more if you would quit forgetting to clean your room. Or, you're such a dunce. Why can't you get the same grades as your sister? The child takes in these stimuli and unconsciously makes a decision that his or her identity is dictated by the conditions or attributions made by his or her authority figures. So, like for instance, if, if a parent says, puts conditions upon giving you the treat, like uh, it's almost like a Pavlovian dog where, where you can only get a reward if you do something correctly. In other words, the child adopts a position, I'm okay only when I clean my room, I'm okay only when I get good grades, etc. The child in this type of situation develops one of two ego states, the adaptive child or the rebellious child. The adaptive child seeks to please the authority figure so he or she goes along to get along. But get this, inwardly this child like any child wants to be free and to be loved for he, who he or she is. He or she wants to be loved for who he or she is, not based upon fulfilling someone else's conditions. The rebellious child takes a slightly different approach. This child ego state says subconsciously, Oh, you won't love me for who I am? You won't give me the positive strokes I need? I'll show you. The rebellious child's life position is, I'm, okay, I'm not okay, so I will get any stroke I can find, positive or negative. According to transactional analysis, if a person can't get the positive strokes he or she needs to mentally survive, he or she will settle for negative strokes just the same. Before we venture off into what the parent ego state means, it's necessary to explore the nature of the stroke economy in transactional analysis. This economy is propagated by parental or authority figures and is carried around in, as a script in, in everyone's head. And in case you don't know what strokes mean in this context, they're 
the minimal unit of recognition or affirmation that people need for emotional survival or affection, love, you could say. They're absolutely critical for maintaining a healthy self-esteem or self-concept in children. Claude Steiner in his book, Scripts People Live, summarizes how parents or authority figures unwittingly shackle children within the negative side of the stroke economy. He writes, the teaching of the rules of the stroke economy to children constitutes the basic training for lovelessness, which is a script. As is, as is in all scripting, lovelessness is based on injunctions or commands and attributions like you're lazy, you're a dunce, or it could be positive attributions here, but not in this negative stroke economy. The injunctions or the commands of the stroke economy are, number one, don't give strokes if you have them to give. This command is self-explanatory. It simply means that people are enjoined against freely giving of their loving feelings. Don't ask for strokes when you need them. Again, this injunction is self-explanatory and probably the, the one that is most thoroughly taught to people. Don't accept strokes if you want them. This injunction is not as common as the two above. When present, it prevents people from accepting the strokes that are given them even when they are wanted. Don't reject strokes when you don't want them. Frequently, people are given strokes which, for one reason or another, don't feel good or not or not wanted. Don't give yourself strokes. Self-stroking, or what is called in transactional analysis, bragging is enjoined against or is frowned upon. Children are taught that modesty is the best policy and that self-praise and self-love are in some way sinful, shameful, and wrong. Now, the parent ego state can be divided into two types the critical parent or the nurturing parent. The critical parent is bound by the rules stated above. This parent ego state withholds positive strokes if certain conditions haven't been met. What it does, however, is decrease the self-esteem of the child. And the child, rather than becoming the free child ego state, becomes the adaptive or the rebellious child. This child is eternally either trying to please someone so that it can feel accepted or goes the opposite route into rebellion and antisocial behavior. On the other hand, as Steiner writes, the nurturing parent has as its main interest to support, to keep going, to take care of, to protect the child. The reaction of the nurturing parent to the newborn is, I'll take care of you no matter what. The child under the influence of a nurturing parent has not, no such conditions placed upon him or her, like the adaptive child. In the nurturing parent, self-esteem is high in the, in the parent ego state and does not need validation from the behavior of the child. So this parent ego state doesn't need to place conditions or make negative attributions about the child to get what the parent wants. This is the key. Much of the critical parents' method stems from the fact that they themselves are product of critical parents themselves. But rather than promote high self-esteem in motivating their children, they place conditions, thus eternally binding their children's self-esteem to a role performance or how well they do in certain things or the parent's estimation of the child. That is exactly why 99% of the population can't feel good about themselves, can't define themselves apart from how well they perform in their roles as a breadwinner, husband, wife, golfer, swimmer, or whatever. They are the eternal adaptive child begging for mercy at the feet of their critical parent who tells them that they can feel good about themselves only when. You fill in the blank. The adult ego state, in contrast to the parent and the child, is above the unconscious programming of the parent and child ego states. In other words, the parent, the, the things you hear in your head that, that your parents told you, um, that's a script and the child also has a script. And it's, it's kind of an unthinking, unconscious type of thing. And like I said, just said, these latter two are nothing but scripts. The adult makes decisions not by the rules and regulations of the parent script. Neither does it make decisions based upon the emotions or imagination of the child script. The adult makes decisions based upon logic. The challenge for most people is that they have never recognized the distinction between their parent, child, and adult ego states. Therefore, they repeat the past programming and don't have a clue that they are doing it. For instance, the reason why you won't make a cold call or do something that's socially difficult is that your parent ego state may be telling you that it's not acceptable. Like it's not acceptable to make a call on Sunday afternoon. Be happy with what you have, 
all these types of things that your parents tell you when you're a little kid that, that become a program in your mind and really make decisions for you. Your child ego state may feel that its self-esteem may decrease with rejection. The adult would analyze the situation and make the call because what you are offering is a benefit to the prospect. And not only that, your child always has to get permission from the parent. Most people don't really make the money they really want to because they don't have permission from their critical parent. If I can make too much money, then I will become less spiritual or something to that nature. You don't need to work so hard. Just sit back and enjoy your life like us. In fact, if you really want to improve your life or what we're saying here, break your script, you'll lose many of your friends because many of your friends are living the, the, the same script and they enjoy company. This is because they are comfortable listening to their child's script of need for approval and their parent's script of following the rules to be accepted. Rather than break free of the scripting, they find comfort in their chains. The key then in this first installment on TA for Sales and Life is to turn the stroke economy of the critical parent on its head. One of the very best rules I learned in Sandler training, which is based on transactional analysis, is you'll never earn more than how you see yourself conceptually. And actually, we'll see in another video later that your identity totally controls how well you do in your roles. Like for instance, if you're a conceptually, if your self-image is a four, you will perform at three to five on the roll side. So you never out earn how you see yourself conceptually. And that's part and parcel of the, how the critical parent has scripted the, the child to, uh, to think and the, the rules and regulations by which they have to live life. What this is saying is that if you listen to your adaptive child, the child who constantly seeks approval, or listen to your critical parent, you only have exactly what they say you can have. Listen instead to your adult and really begin to question all the rules and assumptions you have taken for granted for so long. Do they really apply to you now? The sky's the limit. In the next issue, we'll cover Sandler Training's IR theory, identity role, and how you can break free from the limitations that may be may be holding you back. And not only that, we've basically just scratched the surface of, of transactional analysis and how you can apply it uh, to sales, to relationships. It really speaks to interpersonal relationships to a T, so I think you're going to learn a lot, even if you're not interested in sales.